اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته يا مؤمنين لعنة الله عليه يا منافقين Let's say salawat one time as a jama'ah, inshaAllah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidna Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majeed. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad kama barikta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majeed. So in this video, I'm going to be giving you a clear, definite, stand-alone refutation of Yasser Qadi on evolution, his views on evolution. Now, you have to be familiar with his views on evolution for, us to, uh, for this video to be relevant. I won't really be going over it. Needless to say, he believes in the traditional narrative about what evolution, what Allah says about evolution, how Adam al-Islam was created, that he was literally created with the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from clay and this sort of idea that is traditional Islam. This is what Yasir Qadi is talking about. What I'm trying to show is that the Quran in this specific matter is very clearly supporting the evolutionary narrative we're not talking about the tafsil of the evolutionary narrative, but the overall evolutionary narrative is supported. And so in this way, we're going to reject Yasir Qadi. Now, in order to do this, we're going to be very precise in the way we look at the language and examine the language uh, of the first 10 ayat or the first 9 ayat of Surah as sajda Now, if you want to look at the exact manhaj, that I precisely use in all of my videos in which I give Dalail from the Quran. I have a very uh, khas uh, manhaj which I am using and I talk about it in a lot of detail in other videos but I won't do that here. So basically uh, to dive in, uh, if we look at the structure, I'm going to go through each ayah, right? But to just look at the structure of those first nine ayah, in the first three ayah of Surah Sajda, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is introducing the surah. In ayah one, he there's the haruful muqatta'at, alif, la, meem. And then in the second ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Tanzilu ul kitabu la rayba fi min rabbil alameen. So in the second ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving uh, an introduction to what the Quran is, what this wahi is, what this revelation is, how we should relate to this surah as Bani Adam. And so basically, he, okay, and right now I'm going through the structure. We'll, we'll come again to these ayah, right? In the third ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately uh, raises the objection, rhetorically uh, uh, raises the objection that the kuffar raise in, uh, in response to the claim of ayah 2. So this is, Tanzilu ul kitabu la rayba fi min rabbil alameen. So, this claim immediately the kufa raise an objection. So, rhetorically, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in response to Surah uh, Ayah 2, raises the objection for the kuffar, or do they say? Or do they say that he, meaning Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, originated, Fatiru, originated the book? Right, so they raise this objection. Now, these three ayat together is the introduction, the muqaddama to the surah. Right, the first three ayat that we've just gone over is the muqaddama to the surah. In in, in surah in ayah four, Allah subhanahu wa taala uh, says, uh, "He is Allah," and then He gives a long tafsil or. The tarif of who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. So he says he is Allah and then he gives a long uh, tarif of who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, the shinakh, the identity. Who is Allah? Right? Allah. And this same identity in Allah in Surah uh, in Ayah 5, he continues this identity. He continues to tell us 
who he is as Allah. And in Surah 6, it continues. And in each one of these ayah, Allah says, Dhalika, meaning, or Hua, meaning he is the one, or Dhalika, that is the one. So he's always relating back, he's giving a ta tarif, a tafsil of who Allah is, his identity. Right? So we go through that. Now in Surah 7, through uh, ayah 7 through ayah 9, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins talking about the ayah that are perfectly relevant to refuting Yasir Qadi on evolution and giving the correct view, the correct Quranic view on what uh, what uh, our view as Muslims on evolution should be. It gives the most clearest ayah on this topic that I have found. Almost every ayat or set of ayat that have to do with takhliq reject Yasir Qadi's views on evolution. It's very clear. He claims that he is the one who is being most straightforward, most clear in the way that the Quran is speaking, the use, uh, you know, according to the language of the Quran, but he is wrong. He is very wrong. He is not according to the language of the Quran. Almost every single ayah on takhliq is clearly rejecting his view on evolution. But these ayah 7 of Surah Sajda, Surah 8 and Surah 9 are continuing the introduction to Allah, but they're talking about His actions. They're talking about His file. So before in Ayah 4 through Ayah 6, we're giving the identity of Allah, the Shinakht, who He is. His identity. And that identity is continuing, but now we're talking not about who He is, but what He does. And in that what he does from ayah 7 to ayah 9, in that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes perfectly clear that uh, he is the one who created human beings, but in the way he describes it, thumma, thumma, thumma. There's he did this, then he did that, and then he did that. And in that doing this, 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 he, he clearly, in the way he speaks about it, he very perfectly makes it clear that he did evolve human beings, that there is a process of evolution, there's a process of development, and the, the traditional narrative about uh, Adam al Islam, which is based upon Israeliyat and, and hadith, which have been uh, taken from Israeliyat but presented as a hadith of Rasulullah, but they're zaif. So the narrative that is constructed that we all have in our minds traditionally is based upon zaif hadith, uh, which are actually Israeliyat. And then also the Israeliyat themselves. But the Quranic narrative is actually rejecting that narrative and making a clear evolutionary uh, discussion on this matter. Now that's enough of an introduction. That's almost a seven and a half minute introduction. And so let's end the introduction there and start over. And I will go over each ayat specifically. Right? I will go through each ayat specifically and give you the whole narrative, but we're only going to do a brief introduction of the first uh, six ayat, and seven through nine is going to be our main discussion. Now, just to let you know, in ayah 10, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins to speak about what is going to happen after we die, and then resurrection up until ayah 12, right? So 9 through 12. That's And then there's the rest of the surah that's not relevant. So we're going through 1 through 9, so let me begin that now, inshallah. So, Alif, Lam, Mim, so these are Haruful Muqatta'at, right? These are Haruful Muqatta'at. Every surah that begins with the same identical Haruful Muqatta'at, for example, Alif, Lam, Mim, uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Imran, both begin with the same Haruful Muqatta'at that Surah as sajda is beginning with. So these surah ha are a group. And what that group is that, that the whole surah has an identity with every other whole surah which begins with this haruf al muqattat meaning in their wholeness, in their whole surah, in their wholeness of meaning, they have an identity, identity, they're equivalent to every other surah that begins with this haruf al muqattat That is what the haruf al muqattat mean, that these are the haruf, the bamani, the meaningful haruf, which is the um, in Ummul Kitab, from which this surah is being explicated or communicated, and therefore, in their wholeness, in their essence, they are identical to one another. So, this surah as a whole is identical to Surah Al Baqarah and Surah Al Imran. Okay, so the next ayah. 
is tanzilu al kitabu la raiba fi min rabbil alamin tanzilu al kitabi la raiba fi min rabbil alamin okay tanzilu al kitabi la raiba fi min rabbil alamin so this is again like many other surah begin with an identity of the quran and the reason allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives that identity of the quran is to affirm the haq the haqqaniyat the haqqaniyat of the quran so it's a a strong absolute affirmation of the truth of the Quran in various ways at the beginning of various surahs so that our tawakkul, our iman in that surah is muhakkam, is complete, is it's takmili before we begin the discussion of the specific uh, ideas or the specific uh, topic of this particular surah itself. So basically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here does this in this specific way. Tanzilu al-kitabi, the gradual revelation of the book, la raiba fi, there is no doubt in it, min rabbil alameen, from the Lord of the alameen. From the Lord of the Alameen. So we see there's a takrar here, right? So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like in the in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah said, Alif Lam Meem Azalika Ul Kitabu La Raibafi, this is the book in which there is no doubt in it. He could have just done that, right? But here there's takrar. He's not only saying Ul Kitabu La Raibafi like the way he did there, but he's saying Min Rabbil Alameen. Min Rabbil Alameen. So there's no there there's two ways of clarifying the fact that there is no possible doubt in it. Because one place he's saying La Raibafi, he's directly stating there is no doubt in it. And then he's saying Min Rabbil Alameen. So in the Nisbah that this is from the Lord of all the Alameen, it is making perfectly clear that there can be no doubt in it. Right? There can be no doubt in it. Okay, let's go on to the next surah. And again, we see here, Alif la mim zalika ul kitabu la rayba fi. Alif la mim tanzilu ul kitabu la rayba fi min rabbil alameen. So we see the Alif la mim being the source, the common uh, source of both these surahs, because that is this, we have a similar second ayat. We have a similar topic to the second ayat, which is Ul Kitabu La Raibafi. We see both the idea in both the beginning of Surah Al Baqarah and the beginning of Surah As Sajda. So now we're getting to Ayah 3. Am Yaqulu Uktarahu Balhua Ul Hakku Min Rabbika Lutunazira Kauman Ma Atahum Min Nazirin Min Kablika La Allahum Yahtadun. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately is raising that rhetorical objection to the identity that has been given to the Quran in ayah 2. So in ayah 3, Allah is raising immediately a rhetorical objection of the kuffar to the identity of the Quran that has been given to the Quran in ayah 2. And what does he say? Or, meaning or referring to or rhetorically and grammatically referring to ayah 2, the, ident the identity that is given in ayah 2 of the Qur'an, or ya'quluna uktarahu, or do they say uftarahu, sorry, or do they say ha he has originated it, and the secondary meaning, he, it's originated etymologically, but has he fabricated it, meaning it has it originated with him, aftarahu bal huwa ul haqqu, rather, it is the truth. Rather, it is the truth. Bal huwa ul haqqu min rabbika from your Lord. Again, what? Alif lam mim tanzilu al kitabu la raiba fi min rabbil alameen. So again, the haqqaniyat of the Quran is being is being emphasized and reaffirmed and um, re-emphasized and reinferred in the face of the objection that is being raised about that identity, Allah saying, rather it is min rabbika from your Lord litunazira uh, litunazira uh, to warn qawman, a people ma atahum min nazirin ma atahum not has uh, been given to them from a warner min kablika from before, meaning before, never before has there been given to them a warner kablika la allahum yahtadun. Um, 
uh, so that they may possibly be guided so that they may possibly be guided this is why a warner is being given to them um, and the truth has come from your Lord so that they may have a warner, a people who have never had a warner before them, so before then, so that they may be guided. Okay, so this is the introduction to the whole surah. Now, immediately, as a part of that guidance, as a part of that, uh, now let's begin to, to articulate the tafsil of Ul Hakku min Rabbika. He is going to start speaking the truth that has come. Uh, so that they may be guided now he's going to start giving the tafsil of that hidayah and and the tafsil of that al haq min rabbika right he's going in surah four, in ayah 4 he's going to start doing that right so the introduction is now over and immediately in ayah 4 allah says so the, the first aspect of Al-Haq and the first aspect of the Hidayah is to start giving a shinakh to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To start giving an identity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same way the Quran has been given an identity in Ayah 2. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to start introducing, uh, giving tarif of himself. Allah is the one who created the heavens and, and the earth and what is between in six days and then he ascended he ascended and sat upon the throne not is for you uh, from other than him min waliyan one wala shafiyan uh, uh, an ally or an intercessor so not for you is from other than him uh, from uh, allies friends or intercessors and intercessor and not intercessors meaning he's basically saying that for you or for the Mu'mineen or fun for Bani Adam, there is no one other than Allah who is an ally or friend, and there is no one who is an intercessor for them, for us. Afala um, will you not then remember? Will you not then be reminded of him? Okay. Now again in 32:5, the, the in ayah five of the Surah Sajda, this same identity of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is continuing. So there, this is Allah, and the whole tarif of Allah is given in this ayah. A fail of Allah, a very important fail uh, of of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is going to be discussed now. But it's going yudabbiru. So it immediately the ayah begins yudabbiru al amra min us samai. So it's immediately beginning the the ayah with an action, and the the file is not being given because the file is the 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 file is Allah as He has been introduced in the ayah before, right? So the file is Allah in the identity that he has been given in ayah 4 in ayah 5 that Allah is now committing an action he is taking an action he is the one who uh, arranges or composes he is the one who gives uh, gives order to that's the best idea. He is the one who gives order to. He is the one who arranges. He is the one who composes. Yudabbiru ul amra min ussamai, the matter uh, from the heavens. So he does this from the heavens. Illa ul ardi unto the earth. So he does this from the heavens. He gives order from the heavens unto the earth. Thumma yaruju, thumma yaruju. Then. Then Ya'ruju ilayhi, it will ascend, the matter will ascend fi yawmin uh, in a day, qana migdarahu, the extent of which uh, is afalas uh, alpha, sa, alpha, uh, alpha sanatin mimma ta'udun, uh, which is a thousand years of what you uh, count. From what you count, it is a thousand. So, so basically, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is the one who is giving order to from uh, from the heavens unto the earth, right? And then, uh, not only he's the one who is giving order to the matter, ul amra, meaning 
the occasion, right? He's giving order to the occasion or the matter from un, from the heavens unto the earth. Then the order, the amar is going to the tadbir is going to ascend unto him in a day that is a thousand years of what we count, right? So this is again a very important fail of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Is basically saying the whole universe or all of creation or everything that is happening now or has happened from the beginning of time until the end of time is basically only a single action of Allah. He is the one who is arranges it, who is ordering every. Everything that has ever happened or will happen. Okay. That is the know of the seen and the unseen. Dhalika alimu ul ghaybi. Dhalika. That. Now again we see before it was huwa. Or the huwa was implied yudabbiru. Because yudabbiru is a fail. The file was Allah as he was introduced in ayah 4. Here there is an explicit article which is again referring to the one who came before. Thalika, that Allah who does this action. That, that one, thalika. Alimu ghaybi so another identity is assigned to that one. He is the knower of the ghayb. Wa ushahadati and the witness. Ul azizur rahim. Ul azizur rahim. So this is the second identity. The, the, the compassionately mighty. The compassionately mighty. So we see now Allah. Allah the one who... Uh, is introduced in ayah 4 and then the, his his very important action of yudabbiru is is told to us in ayah 5 that one is also alimul ghaib ghali ghaib wa shahadati and then this is again an identity of Allah. He's Ul Azizur Rahim. So Allah and Ul Azizur Rahim are equivalent. Right? Allah and Ul Azizur Rahim here uh, rhetorically speaking have been equated, they're equivalent. Now we're getting to the part that is going to directly refute Yasir Qadi. And this is Ayah 7 through Ayah 9. So ayah 7, Ayah 8, Ayah 9. And these are kind of like a sub-nazm, right? Now, again, like in Ayah 4 where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or Ayah 5 I believe, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, action was being discussed. Another action is being discussed. Just like in Ayah 6, Allah said, Zalika, that is the one. Here he says, Ulladi. Ulladi Ahsana. So he is the one who has Ahsana Kulli Shayin, who has uh, beautified or perfectly beautified, exceptionally beautified, all that he Khalaqahu, Kulli Shayin Khalaqahu, all that he has created, Wa Ba'da'a Khalaqa. And then he originated Khalaqa ul Insani Min Teen. Khalaqa ul Insani Min Teen. He began the creation of Insan Min Teen. Now, in other places, Allah says Khalaqa ul Insani Min Teen. He says Khalaqa ul Insani Min Teen. But here he doesn't say that. Here the idea is different. It's distinct. He's Wa Bada'a Khalaqa ul Insani Min Teen. So he originated or he initiated, not originated, he initiated, he began. The creation of Al Insan Min Teen. He doesn't say he created man from Teen. He says he began his creation from Teen, and this will be important in the next two ayat, right? Okay, another thing that I need to point out here before we go into the next ayah is Ulla di Asana Kulli Shayin Khalakahu, right? So he is the one who perfected or perfectly beautified or exceptionally beautified uh, everything he created. Everything. He created. And then immediately when he says that he initiated the creation of insan from teen, what this is saying together when you take the two clauses of this ayah together, what it's clearly saying is that there's there's a process of initial creation and then there's something that there is a creature. There's a creature or there is a creation that exists and then there is the perfection or the beautification, ahsana, uh, there is the, the beautification or the perfection of that creation or creature that already exists, right? And then Allah says the beginning of creation, meaning he created insan from teen, but that's not the end of the story. There's a further beautification, there's a further perfection that is going to happen. So remember here, the, the creation of man was initiated from teen, from clay, from, from clay, right? Okay, 
Now we're getting to the second to last ayah and we say ثُمَّ جَعَالَ نَسْلَحُ مِنْ سُلْسَالٍ مِنْ مَاءٍ مَحِينٍ ثُمَّ جَعَالَ نَسْلَحُ مِنْ سُلْسَالَاتٍ مِنْ مَاءٍ مَحِينٍ So then, then, this, this is important, the then, the articles in the Quran are so important, right? Allah says ثُمَّ then. So what has already happened? He is Allah's sunnah is that He beautifies and perfects everything that He creates. And then He began the creation of insan from teen al insan. From teen is it insan or al insan? Ul and al insan. So remember when Allah is saying al insan, He is referring to the species also. He is referring to one specific insan but he's also re not adam though he is referring to one specific insan but he is also referring to the the species as a whole in an archetypal individual in an archetypal individual al insani min teen thumma khalaqa thumma ja'ala naslahu and then after he began the creation of insan he appointed uh, he appointed ja'ala uh, Naslahu, his nasal, his his progeny, min sulsalit from uh, sulsalatin min ma in mahin, an extract of uh, of a uh, 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 lowly fluid, an extract of lowly fluid. What this is is talking about semen. So Allah began the creation of insan, al insan, and then He appointed. That this is a sunnah that Allah, when Allah says He appointed something, it's like Allah appointed Adam Khalifa fil Ard. Allah appointed Ibrahim al Islam and his Zuriyat Imam al Nas. Allah did not appoint for the qom that Zul Qurnain came to with Satar from the Shams. So if He did not appoint Satar from the Shams, what that means is these people never had any Satar to protect them from the Shams, from the sun. Right? So if he doesn't appoint something, there's a there's a constant reality that that thing doesn't exist. Right? So there's no shelter for from the sun. But if he does appoint something, there is a mabni, there is a continuous reality that that thing does exist. So it's establishing a sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in regard to something. Right? So thumma ja'ala naslahu, when Adam is appointed uh, Khalifa tul filhar is the sunnah. It is it's continuous that Zuriyat the Adam Bani Adam is now going to be the Khalifa of filhar as we are till this day, right? Thumma jaala nasluhu. So then, after Allah began the creation of insan min tin, thumma jaala nasluhu. He appointed his nasl from semen. Basically, that is what this is. After his insan has already come to exist, he is not perfect yet. He is not in his final asana, right? Allah has not perfected or perfectly beautified him yet. But his creation has began and he, he is a creature. He, his, he has been created. And now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a distinct al-insan exists distinctly as al-insan. Then thumma ja'ala nasluhu, Allah appoints his nasl, meaning the like of him, his progeny, his offspring, his children, from his semen, from from semen and ex from his semen, right? Now we're coming to the final ayah, which is going to refute Yasir Qadi fully, completely, and perfectly. Thumma sawahu, thumma sawahu. Then we formed him. So this is this this is here a synonym of ahsanu, uh, ahsana min kulli shayin halakin. What was it? Ulla di ahsanu kulli shayin. The one who beautified or perfectly beautified or perfected everything he created. So we're talking about thumma ulla di ahsanu. We're talking about ahsanu here. Thumma sawahu. Sawahu is that ahsanu. It is perfecting or perfectly beautifying something Allah has already created. This is talking about perfectly beautifying al-insan who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already has created min teen, right? And he has already ja'ala naslahu min salsalin min teen salsalin mahin. It is already uh, appointed that his progeny will be from his semen. Now this is already existing, right? Uh, insan already exists. His progeny is already being produced through his semen and then summa sawahu then we formed him 
وَنَّفَخَ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِ Then we blew into him from our ruh. وَجَعَالَ لَكُمْ أُسْسَمَاءَ مِنْ رُوحِ وَجَعَالَ لَكُمْ And then we appointed for him أَسْمَعَوْ وَالْأَبْسَارَ A vision, and I mean hearing and vision. وَأُلْ أَفَعِدَاتِ And hearts. قَلِيلًا مَا تَشْكُرُونَ And little do you doubt. And little are you grateful. And little do you have shukar. So we see that in this sequence of ayat, right? In this sequence of ayat, Allah first created Adam from teen. Then he appointed his progeny from, from semen. Then thumma sawa'un. And then after he already exists and his progeny is already being formed, is being already being uh, progenerated through his semen. Then sawahu wa nafakha fihi. Then uh, Allah forms him further, perfects him. Ahsanu ulla di ahsanu. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blows into him, fihim and ruhi. Now this is Adam. Now th So there's al-insan, there's the progeny of al-insan, and then there is a particular someone, nafakha, uh, fihim and ruhi, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, blow is uh, blowing uh, his sp the spirit into and appointing for him a uh, uh, the, the the hearing and the vision and the hearts meaning the interior subjectivity and thoughtfulness of a human being kalilan matashkurun little are you doubtful so we see in the seven through nine in the ayah seven through nine we clearly see a process by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created Adam alayhi salam but we also see that before Adam alayhi salam was created Allah began his creation mintin, and then he appointed uh, a progeny through semen and then there is someone or something in whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is blowing into him the spirit and is appointing for us um, uh, the, the vision and the hearts, uh, the vision and the hearing, the hearing and the vision and the hearts, uh, and that we're not grateful for. So we see in this overall process that I've repeated for you over and over in Surah 7 through Surah 9, in Ayah 7 through Ayah 9, a Surah as Sajada, and I've given to you clearly in the context, it clearly refutes uh, Yasir Qadi's views in evolution and provides the Quranic view on evolution, right? And just to finish the video strong, immediately after Allah says, وَقَالُوا عَائِذَا ضَلَالْنَا فِي الْأَرْضِ عَائِنَا لَا فِي خَلْكٍ جَدِيدٍ بَلْحُمْ بِلِقَاءِ رَبِّهِمْ قَافِرُونَ Still they ask mockingly, when we are disintegrated into the earth, will we really be raised as a new creation? In fact, they are denial of meeting with their Lord. So immediately afterward, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beginning to speak about uh, our death and resurrection. Our death and resurrection. And this continues into ayah 12. For two more ayah, this is going to continue. So I have not misled you. I've given you the full context. And then in that context, we've looked at ayah 7 through 9. And now I'm giving you, look, immediately after, the ayat are no longer about this topic. They begin with uh, death and resurrection and this whole topic. And then I think in ayah 13, Allah begins to talk about the mu'mineen and his sunnah regarding to mu'mineen. So I've given you, the. I'm not hiding anything from you. I fully contextualized and I've given you a, uh, the next few ayat so you can clearly see. And this is Surah Sajda. You can clearly look at it. So we refuted Yasir Qadi's views on evolution, which is really important to do because the akaleen of the alam cannot accept his views. They are zalim views and they are ghair akil views that they are not intellectually reconcilable views. They are not rational views. They are irrational views. Uh, they, someone who knows the Quran and knows uh, maybe PhD level biology or even even in some cases high school biology, but definitely you know bachelor's, master's biology. These people cannot reconcile their iman with Yasir Qadi's views, right? He, about biology and evolution, they're irreconcilable. So this type of work is important to do, and this is the clear, definite, standalone proof for why uh, Yasir Qadi is wrong about evolution. 
Please like, please subscribe, please comment below, share our videos. Please make infaq to support this dawah to the aqaleen of Bani Adam to Islam, to establish Islam as uh, 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 as deen fil ard for the ikamat of deen fil ard ikamat of al islam as the deen fil ard the ghalib deen fil ard the fatih deen fil ard the does the to make it zahir over all other madaib okay that is what we're doing on this channel please take part in it please support the channel please uh through patreon or through a bank transfer like subscribe comment uh share i will talk to you soon inshallah assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh